G'day everyone, my name's Cautious Pancake, and today I'm going to show you how you can use an invisible block glitch to make things float in midair from everything from a single block to a full POI. Before I start, I have to say a big thank you to JP Nixon, as his tip on these blocks led to this video. So without messing around, let's get straight in and take a look at what the blocks are that we're playing with today. The first is the Catwalk V2 rail only single double end, and the other is the double double variant. No, no, not that one. I mean the Catwalk V2 rail only double double end. And what's special about these blocks is, if you take them, say the single double, and put them up against any flat surface block, the railing part will disappear into the flat surface of the block, turning it invisible. It's still there though. You can see that I can't place anything in the same location, but can connect another block to it. So the game definitely thinks there's a block still there. It's not just cube blocks though. If we put in a ramp, a cube block with some trim, a half cube and a plate block here, you can see that for each other than the trim block, we can repeat the glitch with the rail disappearing into the flat surface. If there's no flat surface parallel and adjacent to the railing though, you can also see that this just doesn't work, highlighting that it's not a glitch everywhere with this block type, just in particular circumstances. Now if that was all there was, then this would be interesting but not particularly noteworthy, as it's not that different from using sheet blocks, as the most that we could do is create a two wide gap between two flat surfaces, as you can see here's the version with the railings, and we can repeat the process with sheet blocks instead. The rail is a full health block though, so it has a slight advantage over the sheet, but apart from that it doesn't look too much different. But looks aren't everything, or at least that's what my mum always tells me, so the next thing I have to test is if the invisible block is targetable by the zombies. So of course I had to build a basic floating base to test it with the horde. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, the zombies are not confused by the invisible supports and are happy to attack the invisible block, or at least the block above it. As you can see, if we knock out some of the cube blocks, we can see that the rail block itself has been damaged. So even though the blocks are invisible, the zombies are able to hit them and do damage. So at this point, we've got a curiosity block, but without any great advantage. So let's get to the good stuff and take a look at the double double, which is where the magic happens. The double double by itself acts much the same as the single, except leaves the extra railing hanging out by itself meaning that you might think that it's limited to creating a single gap like this. But where it gets fun is when you add two double-double blocks together, and the railings cancel each other out and make it vanish. This obviously allows for a large chain or stack of these blocks to be placed, creating a big, invisible constructed section that can provide stability to visible sections above it. What's even better, in addition to being invisible, is that they can also be passed through, you can see here that after creating this basic 5x5 grid, I can drive the 4x4 vehicle through where the invisible blocks are, with no ill effects or collisions. So that's how I was able to put a single block way up in the sky, but with proper stability and even levitate a POI, by connecting a cube block at each end with double double blocks through the middle, it will appear as if it's floating, but for stability purposes, it's completely connected all the way down to bedrock. Now that we have the ability to float a base in the sky, the question is obviously, is this a good idea for bases in general, and can you AFK with it? To find out, I built this floating platform resting on a 4x4 grid of the double double block. It's 12 blocks high, with the steel cubes being on the 13th block from the ground. This is a day 42, game stage 123 horde night, with 64 zombies and default block damage. And as you can see, the zombies just want to stack up underneath and climb on each other, forming a zombie pyramid. Very like the old World War Z movie. I don't know if you remember those movie posters. Anyway, they obviously can't climb on the invisible blocks, so they stack up, and while it sounds like they are swinging and hitting on the blocks, it's going to be interesting to see if they can cause significant damage or not during the Horde night. So while that runs, let's talk about if this is something that's going to remain in the game, or now that this is out there, will the fun pimps fix it? I say fix in this case rather than nerf, since I think it's pretty obvious that the railing isn't supposed to become invisible when it's stacked next to another one. But one thing to consider is how different is this from, say, a floating platform built on a grid of those little tiny blocks that exist already in the game, like one of the new gazebo parts, the Gazebo Roof V110 in particular. When comparing the invisible block 
With a really tiny block, you can use both block types to create tall pillars of stability. Both blocks, when placed in pillars, are not pathable by zombies. And both blocks are also attackable by the zombies when used for a floating base. The only two differences I can see between them are on pass-through and repairing. The invisible block, when placed, doesn't impact pass-through as we saw earlier. But the same can't be said for the gazebo block, which you can't drive a vehicle through, which is an advantage to the invisible block. But on the flip side, the invisible block can't be repaired. So after a horde night, you won't know if the invisible block has taken a lot of damage or not, and if it's close to being destroyed. So there's some pros and cons, but I think overall, what's going to matter for this test is how many blocks get destroyed, and are the zombies able to bring down this base. So let's give it a minute and see what happens. So Horde Knight's over, and as you can see, there are no broken blocks here. If any of the railing blocks were destroyed, we'd be able to see as the blocks next to them would become visible, as it needs two railing blocks together to become invisible. I'm actually really surprised that this held up, as we know that the zombies can hit them. To give it a bit more of a test, let's try spawning in a bunch of demos, but unfortunately, they just got a bit confused by the whole situation. So instead, here's a day 7000, game stage 912 Horde, and after running this for about an hour, there are still no broken blocks. To prove that they can be broken, here's a smaller test run with a 2x2 grid of wood frames as the invisible blocks, and you can see that the zombies make quick work of them and eventually bring down the base completely. So there's something about the additional height of the original one, or the fact that it's a 4x4 grid of invisible railings, that seem to have provided additional protection. That might need some additional testing, but I'll do that in a future video because I want to ask you now what you think of this block glitch. Do you think it'll be fixed quickly or does it not matter that much since it's pretty similar to using the tiny blocks already in game? Does the AFK potential make it worse since a max level horde can't break any of the blocks or is this something that you'd only ever use for visual building modifications and not look to abuse it? Let me know what you think in the comments and if you found this informative, please give me a like on the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and as always, happy building.